Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Welcome back to the Lone Star Hawaiian Garage. And if you notice, I am crystal clear at the moment. We have a legitimate camera. For the last three years, we've been using a, a GoPro in every single one of our videos. We did everything on a GoPro and uh, we have a legitimate camera now. So if I'm incredibly ugly now because of the clarity you see, I sincerely apologize for deceiving you all this time. But welcome back to the Lone Star Hawaiian Garage, my little piece of paradise. We have a little bit to do tonight to prepare for tomorrow, which will actually be the video for today. And we are fixing some of the lighting in here. I love this to death, but it's not very functional. Someone left a comment last time making fun of the functionality of my lights and it got to me. They are not very functional. They are very pretty. It's very bright in here, but the perimeter lights, it might not just be the perfect solution. So you'll see what I'm getting to in a little bit. We're going to grab uh, this stuff because actually that's not going to work for what we need. I thought it was going to, so we're heading back to Lowe's. We're going to return that and get the stuff that we need. Wifey's coming with. Grandparents are watching the kiddos. So We made it back to the garage. It's actually the next morning. What we picked up last night was a whole bunch of baseboards as you see right there. Now, before we get into what we were working on here, if you have not seen the garage build series, definitely go check that out. We've completely transformed this garage from what it was the normal suburban home to this little piece of paradise as I call it today. We have Paradise Cove over here. So from the ceilings to the epoxy floors, to the walls, to the floorboards, to the shelving units, to that thing over there, the New Age Bold Series cabinet set, got our smart TV hanging, got a sound system. Literally the ultimate dream garage, which I've always envisioned it, I, I created. Now, one thing that I do love is the lighting in here. I have 90,000 lumens of lighting. I wanted to go completely overboard with the lighting, which I did, but even though these are really cool from a cinematic perspective, the perimeter lights, unfortunately, do not do me any favors. Because we are in, call it still in quarantine, I do work from home and I spend my entire day here at my little standing makeshift desk, which I created. But after a few hours of working, these perimeter lights here really start getting to me. It starts giving me a little bit of a, of a headache. So the idea is how do we create a light valence for the ceiling with things that are meant for the baseboards of your own home. The idea here is to throw something on the wall that's going to block the light glare from penetrating outward, but allow the light to go project downward in order to light the garage still. So here, these new age cabinet sets do have this light valence here. The light underneath is the exact type of light that is on my ceiling. So the idea is how do we use those baseboards to do this number here? Now, the most difficult part of this is going to be figuring out how the heck we're going to mount these things to the ceiling, keep them close enough to the light where the light doesn't glare out and not ever fall off the ceiling and nail my vehicles in the garage. So we have a bunch of baseboards here. We have seven individual pieces. These are about 12 feet in length each. They are three and a half, four inches in width and they should serve for what we need. Now, the only issue I'm running into is how the heck I'm gonna mount this up. And I'm thinking a 90 degree bracket here do what I need. One thing we need to paint these, I'm gonna paint the inside white and on the outside, I'm actually gonna paint it the same exact color as my ceiling so it blends all in. Then we're gonna hop in the trail boss and head to Ace Hardware because we need to go find some of these 90 degree brackets, which I hope exist. So without further ado, let's finally get working. So that means time lapse for you guys. We'll cue the music and go. So last few times I started this truck up, after it sat for a while, it sputters quite a bit at startup. I'm assuming it's because I don't drive it as much as I probably should. So all the ethanol in the gas gets gunked up. I'm worried that my injector's a little bit clogged. So I do have some sea foam, which I'm gonna put in the truck today and just wash it through just because she needs a little cleaning. Well, she's running smooth, that's great news. But uh, I'm still gonna put the sea foam in it because it's been a little while. Then we're gonna take her out full of spin. There's something about 
older trucks. It's not an old truck. It says a 2007, but it's old by today's standard. I don't know what it is. It might just be a little more bumpy, a little more bouncy, a little more rough, a little more rattly. Love this truck. Ace Hardware coming in clutch as always. 90 degree brackets. Three quarters inch in length, it's actually gonna be absolutely perfect for what we need. Now the bad part about where we live is there's no good gas anywhere. There's like four 7-Elevens on this street heading south and every single one of them has horrible gas. Every time I filled the charger up at any of those places, it would knock like crazy. I go to Shell, I go to Texaco, I go to Costco. That feels great, but that's nowhere near here. So we're gonna save the sea foam for another day. Let's go ahead and go home and start hanging those baseboards. Now begins the real fun. It's gonna be a pain in the butt. This vibrant white, guys, is one of my favorite colors. This looks so good on a wall. It's so freaking bright. So we're pretty much ready to go, guys. We're going to test it out on this side first, just so I don't screw up where it really matters. So I'm going to pull a couple pieces in here. I need to get my ladder. I'm going to have to cut it to size. So we've got 12-foot strips. So we're going to cover about to there, and then we got to cut a piece for the rest of the way. we got our 90-degree brackets. I'm thinking four for... 12 foot spot, so that's calling every three feet, I'm gonna put one of those brackets in. I think I am gonna run back up in the attic quick to see where the studs are, just to secure it, so I don't come out in the morning and find that the valence has just fallen and nailed one of the cars. So we're gonna pull a couple pieces in here, cut them to size, get it situated up on this side. Here we go again, back to a time lapse and go. figuring it out. We have one run completely done, actually mostly done anyways. This run's done and I figured out how to hold the other end up while I'm working. I created some spare hands out of some spare wood I had in the backyard. So we got a two by four with some other pieces of wood. This is meant to hold the molding in place and I prop it up against the ceiling. That way it holds it there while I'm working on the other end 12 feet away. On the other end, because the garage floor is super slick, so we got shopping bags and duct tape to give some traction against the ground, that way it doesn't slip out and destroy the wall. But anyways, as I continue to do this, I'm learning that there's no such thing as a flat surface in this garage, unfortunately. So all the crevices and stuff, you can kind of see light bleeding through there just at the top. Like, so we got this piece done and this piece. It looks so freaking good, guys. When you just compare this side and this run to this wall, that's so freaking cool. It looks, it looks so much better than kind of just what I have currently. So anyways, you guys are going back to the time lapse because I have a ton more to do. And then uh, we're gonna keep going. Probably the most important part of this, which is the Paradise Cove corner. It looks like I have 64 inches from this end all the way to a two by six that runs across the ceiling right here. So I'm gonna run a 90 degree there, there, and then at the very end in the corner. And then I'm gonna run another piece running down this wall. Let's go ahead and start working again. I wanna get this corner done ASAP because I'm done with this project already and I'm not even like halfway through. So measure, cut, fit, mount and then this long run here and then we gotta do all the caulking because my ceiling is far from flat yeah all right let's go
really wish I got that on camera. So I had a first ever in this house. I, uh, I fell out of the attic. Like the third step down, my heel slipped off. I had a bunch of crap in my hands, which probably should not have been the case. And then I just slid all the way down and then smacked onto the epoxy concrete, which is wonderful. That was really painful. So we're gonna go ahead and continue on. I think moving my knee and butt and elbow is good for it. So we need to do the caulking now. And the whole goal with this is to get this edge, the very top edge there. You can see some light bleeding out. So if you look close there, obviously my ceiling is far from flat because you can see there it's completely flush. And then here it's, there's a gap. The goal of the caulking is to fill that gap, seal it up real nice. Hopefully I don't fall out of the freaking attic again. That was really painful. <laughs> Let's get doing this and be done. This is looking really good by the way. Look at that. How cool is that? Good morning, guys. It's a uh, bright and early Monday morning, and uh, it turns out that I took more skin off my elbow than I thought. So this little thing going on here from falling out of the attic, it's been oozing for like the last 36 hours. So I got a bandage on it. This is just holding it in place. This is literally a shin guard sleeve. So those of you soccer players, shin guard sleeve works really well for holding bandages on your elbow so it doesn't fall off. Anyways, besides falling out of the attic this weekend, that was a lot of fun. The perimeter lights look phenomenal. The white's a little bit off, so I'm gonna go around the perimeter this morning. I'll be working here in a few hours, but I figured this morning I'll go ahead and run the paint around the perimeter, get that touched up, work all day, and then we pack probably this afternoon to close this thing out, and then the fun process of editing begins. So, let's be going. Wow, look at this place, guys. This is amazing. Once again, I just, I freaking love this place. This garage, I call it my little piece of paradise, but I'm literal about that. I love this garage. It is absolutely gorgeous, and every single thing I do to it just makes it just a little bit better. This little valence that we have, it's such a small touch, literally four inches across the border of the ceiling, but that lighting difference is night and day. Looking at the TV here, I actually can look at the TV without my eyes straining because I'm looking directly into a beam of light. That is completely my own fault. I did this myself. I put them around the perimeter, thought it would be cool. It is cool, it just hurts your eyes really badly. So we do still have to shift the lights down a little bit. I'm gonna pull out that three foot light there at the end, put a four footer in its place. Everything's gonna shift down about 12 inches. That way it gets a little bit closer to that valence. I think it's gonna tie in everything real nicely. But that's gonna be in the morning. So we're gonna call it that for tonight, pull the cars back in the garage. Let's pull the cars back in and we'll see you in a second. Everything is moved, everything is adjusted. 
This took quite some time to complete, but I am so happy with the results. It's been night and day difference. It's been an entire week actually that I've had these borders complete. I have worked the entire week from the garage and that's all because these no longer blind me. As I'm working here on my standing desk, again, this is a rolling desk. So I typically roll it up here against these mats. The biggest difference is I can actually look to a, a border of my wall or even look at the TV behind me without hurting my eyes. These lights are incredibly bright, no doubt about it. 90,000 lumens, is, which is completely overboard and totally unnecessary for the most part. I am so happy with this. It looks so cool, just the illumination effect. And actually when you come out here at night to see the vehicles in the garage, which you'll see in the next upload, geez, this is a completely different look for the garage. I'm so happy with this. And then lastly, obviously with the TV, the biggest benefit now is I can actually look at the TV without this completely blinding me. This looks so freaking cool. And obviously I forgot one light, so I'm gonna turn this on for you guys to get the full effect, which is these bad boys down here. Yes, we have under cabinet lighting with my light valence right here. This is what spurred the idea. So one last look guys, here is Paradise Cove in the Lone Star Hawaiian Garage. This is my little piece of paradise. Thank you again so much for joining me today. Stay tuned for our next one because we are back with the 07 Silverado. In our next video, we are modifying something on the truck, which I have needed to do since I installed this part. Super stoked about it. But we will see you in a few days for that next video. Until then, as always, y'all take care and aloha.